Ben Fearson here, Minnesota MMA News. And I've got the legend, <laughs> Mike Richmond. Uh, Richmond, you're going to be right back in the Bellator cage, but obviously let's look back at your, your last fight against yeah. Mitch Jackson. You overwhelmed him for sure, and I, I got the sense by listening to you talk, you figured that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Um, talk about that fight. I mean, uh, obviously... I don't know that anybody in that arena knew what it meant to Minnesota, you know, what that fight meant to Minnesota and probably to you yeah. on a personal level too, to, to beat Mitch. So what, what was that like having you know, Minnesota's fight of the year, not in Minnesota? Man, it felt super, you know, it felt super good to have that fight and, and you know, it's kind of been a, not a big time robbery, but a, definitely a fight that's been wanting to happen for, for a couple of years now. And, um, at first, I was like, "Oh man, we gotta do this like Bellator, like this is a local show fight, whatever." Yeah. But then, uh, you know, once I knew, you know, all right, it's going down. Then I'm like, "Okay, well, now I get to showcase it on TV. Everyone in Minnesota can watch it. Um, no hiding. No hiding it. Uh, you know, uh, there's there's no running away from it, the performance. So how we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna fight that night? So I, I was like, "All right, well, this is it. This is a showcase. Who's the real deal?" Um, at 145, I was already established in Bellator. He's coming in to try to take what's mine, and um, it meant a lot to go in there and really show that uh, that I'm not the Mike Richmond that a lot of his friends, fans, family thought I was. Um, and to go out there and showcase my skills uh, at that you know that level was awesome. I was gonna say all the shit talking that was done though, which is interesting. Not one of it was by Mitch. Not a word of it. You know what I mean? It was all his teammates and, and people around him. Because Mitch doesn't talk. He never has. He's not, he's stayed out of all the drama from day one. Yeah. You know. So I would assume you didn't have anything ill toward toward Mitch. No, I didn't really have anything ill towards Mitch at all. You know, like you said, as far as I'm concerned, he never really publicly never came out yeah. publicly yeah. came out and said anything. But in my eyes, he allowed his you know his friends his training partner his coach his manager to run to uh to run their mouths for him and i kind of looked at all right you're guilty by association and i kind of used my anger towards you know his um, controlled anger and frustration i used that you know in that fight in, in, a, in a very calculated decisive way and um it felt really good to do that but yeah i mean all in all mitch you know, he, he, he was a, a class act, uh, even in the back, you know, um, his dad was, you know, his dad congratulated me on the fight because um, his dad's a big boxing guy. So, I mean, they were all, uh, you know, they were all um, graceful in defeat. Where, uh, I was going to say, I don't, I don't want to not bring this up, but you were so calm in that fight again. I mean, you've, from day, from your first Bellator fight, mm -hmm. You've been extremely calm. Seem like you're not nervous at all. I mean, when's the last time you've been nervous for a fight? Or do you still get nervous? You just hide it well. Um, I just it's like it's a controlled nerve, you know. Like I'm, you know, everyone's got that nervous feeling in there. But um, you know, I try to really, really fight how I train. You know, how I spar in there, be calm, collected, loose shoulders, stay loose. I mean, that's very important for my striking to uh, maintain that speed, hand speed, and, and good pop with the power is, is to be loose and fluid out there. And uh, I think it just took, it just takes time and experience and, and uh, knowing um, to be able to get hit and slip punches and just stay calm and, and, and get back in the pocket. And I think that's just something that you build and uh, you're kind of, you know, you kind of have inside of you. Were you surprised that Mitch stood with you as long as he did? I mean, he didn't, he didn't shoot for a takedown until he was already hurt. You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought for sure his game plan would be coming in and do whatever he had to do to get you down. And, and that shot didn't come until he was too far away and, and already already rocked. I think a lot of it is, I mean, I think he's just respected my, I, like, I think he had to respect my game. He had to respect that I'm a different, that he wasn't just going to be able to run across the cage and take me down. You, you just, you can't do that against me anymore. You can't just run and, and shoot on me and think you're going to take me down. And I think, you know, he respected that aspect and he was just looking for an angle. Um, he was looking for the right opportunity. He was probably looking to counter, you know, with a shot with one of my strikes. But, uh, you know, I like to get in your face right away and uh, establish, you know, the power and let them know. And then that's when their shot becomes hesitant and their shot becomes, you know, scared. And and, uh, and I think that's kind of what happened. Now, he did clip you once. He did. 
he did get me with. Uh, I don't know if it hurt you or not, but no, it was no, still a good shot. It was definitely, uh, you know, he got me. That was the he got me with the right cross when I threw in an inside leg kick, and it was kind of a lazy inside leg kick, and hit me. It, it didn't stop me. I, I mean, I kind of just was like, all right, and I just kept walking him down, kept walking him down, and then after that, that's when I'm like, all right, and, uh, it's time to show him what I got, and uh, when I clipped him, and then that's when the cut happened on my eye. We clashed heads, and then. Um, the rest is kind of just uh, down Dumb. from there. Yeah. Nice. Now the beauty of Bellator is not only do you get to fight right away again, but you got to watch your opponent fight the night that, that you fought. When is your when is the next fight? When is when will the semifinals go down and talk about your opponent, who you're fighting, and, and what do you know about him? Obviously, you got to see him once already. Yeah, I'm fighting uh, Popo Bezeha. He's uh, like I think he's like seven and one in, in Bellator because he's he had a lot of uh, underguard fights before he started fighting in the two tournaments that he's been in, so he's been kind of groomed in, in Bellator. He's got a lot of experience. He's very um, quick. He looks like a big dude too. He's um, he's fairly big. He's thick. You know, he's like uh, muscular, thick. Uh, I know he's cut. He cuts a lot to 145. You know, where I'm 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 at a point right now where I'm I'm pretty good with my cut to 45. You know, I'm pretty cleaned out. And, uh, but he's athletic, he's quick, he's got a fast shot, um, he is wild with his hands, um, he kind of does a lot of ducking, no look, overhand, stuff like that, which is dangerous. Against and, you uh, especially. And yeah, and, and, those are, and sometimes fighting wild guys that, that throw looping shots are the hardest, the hardest dudes to fight, you know, because they don't fight at a rhythm, they don't fight at a pace, yeah, and that's what makes it awkward. But then he's also really good at submissions, and um, I don't know if he's a black belt or not. He uh, probably is. Uh, you should assume with the you just assume, Brazilian yeah. You know, uh, black belt. But I think he used to train in Brazil, and I, yeah. I think he's down in Alliance now in okay. San Diego. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna be a tough test, and it's gonna be another. It's gonna be another one of my go over there, get across, get in his face, hit him with some fast, heavy shots, let him feel the power, and then. Um, Look to stop some shots, and then look to put him away. If he brings me down, quick hips, get back to my feet, then just impose my will. Last time in the Bellator tournament, you again kind of started off the same way. You know, people were pumped about you and thought, you know, maybe you're you're the favorite. And then the semifinals didn't go the way you wanted mm -hmm. to go. How do you avoid that happening again? I mean, obviously that's that's the opposite of what you want to happen this time. And, and again, I think people are excited about you and, and feel like you're a name to watch out for. I think uh, the Shabala fight, I, I, I definitely underestimated his striking abilities. I mean, the dude's won Muay Thai tournaments in Thailand. He's won a lot of kickboxing um, uh, tournaments. He was very, uh, he's a 100% counter striker. I don't think he threw one, initiated one strike, maybe like a lead kick. Um, and I was just overly aggressive, you know. I just wanted, I just wanted like highlights, you know. I just want people to remember like, all right, Mike Richmond's fighting, like, oh shit. Like, something's about to go down. Um, and I want to continue that. Like I want people to be excited that you know that someone's getting knocked the fuck out. You know. And I think I was overly aggressive in that fight where I'm like I just I kept charging him, kept charging him, and I threw a lazy shot to the body, and and he just countered with that overhand right right into my eyeball. I thought it felt like my eyeball like exploded on impact. It was the weirdest feeling ever. Cause I pride myself in a and a good chin, but it was just square, like eyeball was first contact, stunned me, went down, and then he, he followed up with some punches, and you know, he stopped it, and it is what it is. But uh, what I tried to do with the Mitch Jackson fight is what I do with the Horodesky fight is, is be patient, you know, like I can still go in there and just be ready to know when to drop the hammer, be patient, you know, if know the difference between a, you know, clipping shot just a flash knockdown and when they're really on clear street and you're time to put them away and uh, I think when I'm more patient instead of just constantly just hunting for the you know the straight walk off KO um, I'm going to be more successful fighting a little I bit more patient. I was gonna say, I think the beauty of when you're fighting Mike Richmond and you're fighting a guy that has a big looping punch yeah Mike Richmond can hit him twice before before that looping punch mm -hmm. gets there and yeah, I think that's the the danger. If you're gonna try to throw those kind of punches at you, mm -hmm. you guys are gonna be in trouble. You're gonna be able to take advantage. Yeah, and uh, and that's exactly right. Is just beating them to the punch, being a good counter puncher, having a quicker straight. Me being a southpaw is a uh, is a nasty scenario when I fight righties. You know, um, I don't even think I fought a southpaw, another southpaw in MMA yet. Um, Your so, brother, me? 
Yeah, maybe one day Sean. I was going to say, Sean says that, that he's better looking than you. He is. He's got a bigger butt chin. <laughs> um, I mean, he's just Richmond 2.0. Nice. How, I mean, we, I just talked to him, but uh, he's got a big fight coming too for him. You know, he's still yeah. an amateur, but what do you see out of him? I mean, do you see the same things that, that you were doing coming up that, that you see the potential in him to, to get very far? Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of potential, you know. It's just he's got to get um, used to fighting in there and getting comfortable like the things that you know I had to go through is he's got natural punching power you know you know he, he has that he has that gift he's naturally strong in the clinch um, he uh, he's athletic and he just needs to use how to work his, he use his hips more and, and be a little bit uh, more explosive with his hips and work on his grappling a little bit more but he's just naturally strong naturally hits hard um, he just needs to work on the finer points in which he's doing and he's growing uh, very well uh, and then once he gets used to being loose, you know, that's the biggest thing is staying loose in your fight. You know, that's kind of one issue that he had in his last fight where he just tightened up. You know, you, your sh when your shoulders tighten up and your arms start tightening up, then, you, then you know, you start telegraphing all your punches. Your punches are way slower. You know, you just, uh, once he feels, you know, get those loose shoulders rolling and keep them throughout a the fight, he'll be, you know, you'll start seeing Sean knocking dudes out. You'll start seeing him wanting to stand instead of, you know, he's still in a mentality where, you know, throw a punch, go to the clinch, and try to bring him down. Um, but he's gonna, I think, he'll eventually morph into a uh, uh, standout knockout fighter. You get more nervous watching him fight than when yes. you fight. Yeah, I get way more nervous watching Sean fight. You know, yeah. That's understandable. Yeah, I just want to jump in there. Nice. All right. So when is the Bellator fight? Uh, the Bellator fight is March seventh in uh, Temecula, California, at the Pachanga uh, Casino. Um, familiar with that area? It's right by Camp Pendleton. Um, I was stationed there in four years, so hopefully, so have some buddies, yeah, hopefully, you know, if there's still some Marines that I served with are down in that area, hopefully they'll be coming out. Um, hopefully, just get everybody from Camp. Yeah, Pendleton yeah, or, or just get a mob of Marines, yeah. that, whether I know them or not. Just having them come out and uh, would be would be awesome. And, and I'm looking for another finish. You know, I'm looking to uh, to um, excite the fans. One of the Bellator tweets was a. Uh, Richmond, Mike Richmond 101, don't blink, and that's, I just want to keep living up to that, you know. Yeah, like, don't throw looping punches. And, yeah, don't throw looping punches. <laughs> nice, all right, Mike Marine Richmond, March 7th, Bellator, uh, watch him on TV again, hopefully this time, uh, semifinals is going to go your way, knock him out, get in the finals, and, and uh, earn yourself a title shot. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man.